I am Ishal Abdul Halain. Our hot topic for today is PIC 16F877A on board ADC Explain. An analog to digital converter, or ADC for short, is a circuit that converts an analog voltage to a binary weighted number. This is the symbol of a 10 bit ADC. Its inputs are V in, clock, and V ref. Its output code is read from digital pins B0 to B9. The output is 10 bits wide. The number of output code combination for any ADC is given by 2 to the power of n. Note that n is the ADC's number of digital output bits. Thus, for this 10-bit ADC, there are 1024 possible combinations of output codes. Let's have a look at the transfer curve of our 10-bit ADC. On the y-axis is our 10-bit digital output code. Its value ranges from 0 to 10 bits of 1s and is given by this simple equation. The full-scale output code is when all of the output bits are 1 and corresponds to when the input voltage is at its maximum value, which is VREF. Notice that the ADC transfer curve resembles a set of staircases. The width of each step is the resolution of the ADC. It defines the allowable input voltage range for a particular output code. For a perfect ADC, the step width for all of the steps must be equal. In real life they are not. Anyway, the width is given by VREP divided by 2 to the power of N, the quantity minus 1. Since in this example, VREP is 5 volts and N is 10, the resolution is approximately 5 millivolts. This equation describes the transfer curve. It is a simple ratio between the output code to the input voltage and is equated to the ratio of the maximum output code to the maximum input voltage. You can rearrange it to calculate the digital output code like this. Now, let's try out this equation. Let's say that the input is 2.495 volts. Since N equals 10 and VREF equals 5 volts, the output code is approximately 511 in decimal, which translates to 00, 1111. 1111 at the ADC's output pins. Using the same calculation methods, if the input is 2.5 volts, the output is 01, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Note that any input voltage that is just a little bit above 2.495 volts and below 2.5 volts will result in an output code of 01, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, try this question. Did you get this binary output code? Good. We must know how to access the PIC 16 f 877 as ADC in order to use it for interfacing. Thus, we should be aware that there are four registers that are associated with the onboard ADC. They are registers ADCON0, ADCON1, address H, and address L. All of them are 8 bits wide. Let's have a look at all of them in more detail. ADCON0 is the ADC's control register number 0. It is located in bank 0, address 1F in the file register. Now let's have a look at each bit in greater detail. Bits 6 and 7, the ADCS bits, are the AD conversion clock select bits. It is used to select the conversion speed of the ADC according to this table. Note that the first column is the ADCS bit from register ADCON1 that will be studied next. Anyway, this bit must be included with bit 6 and 7 of the ADCON0 register to properly select the clock frequency fed to the ADC. The clock source of the ADC can be selected from either an internal fast RC oscillator, or from the microcontroller's system clock. For example, if the input combination of bit 6 and 7 are 00, and ADCON1's ADCS2 bit is also 0, the clock fed to the ADC has a frequency of FOSC over 2. If the input combination of bit 6 and 7 are 11, and ADCON 1's ADCS2 bit is 0, the clock fed to the ADC has a frequency of FRC, that is the frequency of the internal fast oscillator. You get the idea. Bits 3, 4 and 5, the CHS bits, make up the analog channel select bits. They allow selection of which pins of the MCU is to be used as the ADC's input. Bits CH0, CH1, and CH2 are set according to this table. For example, if CH2, CH1, and CH0 are programmed as 110, pin 9 of the chip, which is labeled as AN6 serves as the input pin to the ADC. Bit 2, go done, is the ADC conversion status bit. This flag is set to 1 to start the analog to digital conversion. This flag is reset to 0 by the MCU, which you observe to know that conversion is done. Finally, bit 0, 
the AD on bit, is used to turn on or off the ADC. You will program this to 1, to turn on the ADC, after you have configured the ADC properly. ADCON 1 is the ADC's control register number 1. It is located in bank 1, address 9F in the file register. Now let's have a look at each bit in more detail. The output code of the ADC is 10 bits wide, thus the MCU uses two 8-bit registers to hold the results. The results can be written using either the right or left justified format. Bit 7, ADFM, is the AD conversion result format bit and is used for this purpose. You will set it to 1 to have a right justified output, or to 0 to have a left justified output. Don't worry about the output format, we will have a look at it in the upcoming slides. It's easy. Bit 6, ADCS2, is the AD conversion clock select bit for this register. It is used in tandem with bits ADCS0 and 1 found in the ADCON0 register according to this table that we have discussed in the previous slide. Bits 3, 2, 1 and 0 are the PCGF bits and are the ADC port configuration bits. It is used to confirm which pins of the microcontroller to be digital pins, analog pins, and voltage reference pins. This table summarizes all of the possible combinations of the PCGF bits and its related port configuration. For example, if all of its bits are 0, then, all of the ports from AN0 to AN7 act as analog input to the ADC. Note that, you can multiplex between the ADC inputs when more than one port is configured as an analog input. Cool. When all of the PCGF bits are zero, the positive input reference voltage to the ADC is equal to VDD and its negative input reference voltage is VSS. Let's look at another example. If you program all of the PCGF bits to one, then, only AN0, AN2 and AN3 are analog inputs. All of the other A pins connected to port A are digital. The positive input reference voltage is to be supplied at port AN3 while the negative input reference voltage must be supplied to port AN2. Note that the C slash R column at the end of this table summarizes the number of analog channels used as input to the ADC, and the number of pins used to supply the ADC voltage references. This is the simplified schematic of the PIC-15F877As on board ADC. Its input are V-in, a clock input and two reference voltages, V-ref plus and V-ref minus. This allows the ADC to operate in differential mode and at various speeds. Cool. Now let's see where the control registers ADCON0 and ADCON1 fit into this picture. The onboard ADC is actually an 8-channel input ADC. The inputs are connected to pins RA0 to RA5 and RE0 to RE2 of the MCU. When these pins are used as the ADC's inputs, they are referred to as the analog input pins, AN0 to AN7. Notice that switches are used to connect between all of the input pins to the internal ADC's input. These switches are controlled by register at CON0 CHS bits. On the other hand, register at CON1's PCFG bits are used to select the source of VREF plus and VREF minus as shown here. The ADC's clock input is fed from a clock select and prescaler circuit. This circuit selects between the FOSC and FRC clock to be prescaled and fed to the ADC's clock input pin. The clock select and prescale circuit is controlled by the ADC's bits in registers at CON0 and 1. Now, we are only left to understand how the ADC's conversion results are stored in the ADC result register that is attached to its output. Recall that the onboard ADC has a 10-bit parallel output. However, the PIC-16F877A microcontroller is an 8-bit machine. How is it able to store or process its internal 10-bit ADC output? Easy. It concatenates two 8-bit result registers, address L and address H to form a 16-bit register. However, only 10 bits are used. Let's see how. This is address L, located in bank 1 at address 90. It is an empty 8-bit register. To form the 16-bit ADC result register, its MSB is attached to the LSB of register address H, which is another empty register located in bank 0, address 1E. Now recall from our previous slide the ADCON1 register. The MSB is the AD conversion result format bit, or ADFM for short. It can be set to either 1 or 0. When it is set to 0, the ADC's output in the 16-bit result register is left justified as shown here. 
the blue boxes are where the result is stored. Note that the lowest two LSBs of the ADC result is stored in the last two bits of register address L. The remaining bits are stored in register address H as shown here. This is the AD conversion result left justified. On the other hand, when ADFM is set to 1, the ADC's output in the 16-bit result register is right justified as shown here. Again, the blue boxes are where the result is stored. Note that the highest two MSBs of the ADC result is stored in the first two bits of register address H. The remaining bits are stored in register address L as shown here. This is the AD conversion result right justified. That was easy. Let's look at a program I wrote called internal ADC.C. Its function is to digitize an analog input voltage set by a pot resistor that is connected to pin A and 0. The digitized values are then used to turn on LEDs connected to pins RD0, RD1, and all of the port B pins. In the program, port A is set as an input port by writing FF to register TRIS A. This configures pin A and 0 as input, however not an analog input yet. Let's leave it there for now. All of ports B and D pins are configured as output ports by writing zeros to registers TRIS B and D. This allows us to control the LEDs attached to the pins of these ports. Now we will configure the onboard ADC. The next three instructions are used to program the ADCS bits of register at CON0 and at CON1. Recall that they are used to set the ADC conversion speed according to this table. The clock speed chosen is FOSC over 4. The next three instructions are used to program the CHS bits of register at CON0. Since a 000 is specified for each bit, channel A and 0 is configured as an analog input. The following instruction is used to specify the ADC's output format to be write justified, thus, we can expect the output codes to be write justified in registers address L and address H. The following four instructions are used to program the PCFG bits in register at CON1. They are simply equated to 0111 to configure that only A and 0 is the analog input, while the other pins, AN1 to AN7 are digital inputs. These instructions also select the source of BREF plus and BREF minus from BDD and BSS respectively. The final instruction to give is to turn on the ADC. This is done by setting the AD on bit in register at CON0 to 1. See how simple it is to configure the onboard ADC? You simply use bitwise instructions that equate the bits to either a 0 or a 1. Let's have a look at the rest of the program. The first instruction in our never-ending while loop is an if statement. It monitors the go done flag in the ADCON1 register. If the go done flag is equal to 0, the CPU will know that the AD conversion process has finished. Thus, it is set back to 1 in the next instruction so that the ADC can start conversion again. The next two instructions simply write the conversion results into ports B and D. However, if the go done flag is 1, the program simply loops back to the if statement and checks the go done flag again. That's all for this simple program. Now, let's assume that the output of the pot resistor is 3 volts. Which LEDs turn on? To answer this, let's calculate the output code. It is 1001, 1001, 10. Since we have chosen the right justified output format, the AD conversion result register is configured as shown here. Since address L is written to port B, and address H to port E, LEDs connected to pins RB125 and 6, and pin RD1 turns on. When the program is simulated, this is what you see. If you change the pot resistor's value, the LEDs will turn on according to the new digital value corresponding to the new analog value at pin A and 0. I'm sure you could write your own ADC code for the PIC16 F877A now. So what have we learned today? The very basics of analog to digital converters. We also learned about the registers associated to the PIC16 F877A's internal ADC in detail. Then, we saw how the ADC's output can be formatted. Finally, in the example program, we saw the steps taken to configure the ADC. I hope you learned something new today. If you found it beneficial, do not keep it to yourself. Share this video with someone that might benefit from it. Have a nice day.